welcome to JCSML. I am Curtis Socia, the author of JCSML, and in this video I will be covering the basics. The first thing you need to do is download the free version from the JCSML.com website. This version powers all of the animations on the website, but is not nearly as powerful as the elite version of the library. And this is where you would go to download the free version. After you have downloaded the library and unarchived it, retaining the subfolders, your file list should contain the following materials. Template.html. This is the simplest example and requires no configuration to run it. Template Ajax.html utilizes Ajax to dynamically retrieve your animation script. This requires you to set up a virtual folder in IIS if you are on a Windows-based system in order for it to work. There are other articles available on how to do this online, so I will not be covering this here. Anim1.js contains your animation script for the simple example. This file is linked into the HTML page. This simplifies the debugging process since browser debugging sometimes craps out with scripts retrieved via Ajax. Anim1.ajax.js is the same animation script as the simple example. This file is set up in such a way that you can retrieve it via Ajax and it will automatically execute. I have included this example because it demonstrates how animations can be packaged and distributed much like Flash animations. The scripts folder contains jQuery, jQuery easing, and the JCSML 1.7 library. The images folder contains a one by one GIF file. It contains one transparent pixel. This file is required if you intend for your animations to run on Internet Explorer 7 and 8. Due to the mechanics of JCMS, JCSML's design, failure to include this file will result in a broken image icon when your animations play, so be sure to include it. Now that we have reviewed the files, let us now open template.html and anim1.js. The first file we will look at is anim1.js. This file contains the media script structure you will use to define your animations. It also contains the list of images associated with your animation. The steps are virtually the same every time you create a new set of animations. You first define the images you wish to use, then you create the media script structure that defines how your animation runs. The media object script structure is broken into three major components, configuration, sourcing, and sequences. For a complete list of all parameters in each section, visit jcsml.com and review the specifications portion of the website. Here I will show you where to find the specifications for the media object script structure. Moving on. The configuration section, CFG, is where you define the page element that the animation will be injected into. You can also group your animations, but that will not be covered here. The sourcing section, SRC, is where you define the list of images available for this animation. You may also specify the index of the actual image to be used. The sequence section, SEQ, is where you define your sequence. You may have multiple sequences, here I'm only showing one, in the same media object script structure as we will soon see. The sequence consists of three components as well. The initial INI configuration, the next NXT configuration, and the effects, FX, that will be applied to the animation. Now this may sound a little confusing, but another way to think about this is, this is your initial frame of the animation. This is the last frame of this sequence's animation. And this is how you want that animation sequence to be played. So in this example, we start off with image index 0, which is logo.png. 
and we have created one sequence within our media object script structure. The starting values of the animation are fairly easy to understand. Its left and top width and height are all set to zero along with its opacity, which is how opaque is the image. We do set its angle starting position to 300 degrees and we give it a Z index of 1. Z indexes are layers and for those of you familiar with HTML, uh, you'll already fully understand those. Uh, next, so this is the last frame of the sequence, we want the opacity to be 1, which is completely opaque. You cannot see through it. The angle we want it to, go, to basically rotate back from 300 degrees down to 0 degrees. And ending dimensions will be a width of 130 and a height of 103. Now the FX portion is where the magic really happens. This is where you configure how this sequence within your media object script structure will execute. So in this case, we say we want to start delaying the animation by 750 milliseconds. So don't start it in for three quarters of a second. We want it to last for 2.5 seconds. And we want to use the jQuery easing function, ease out bounce, which basically makes it come in smoothly and then bounce. And it applies that effect, this easing effect is applied to all of these attributes. You can apply your easing functions to specific attributes through the special easing function, but I will not be covering that here. Now, let's move on to the template page that actually loads and executes this animation. The template.html page is a great little page to start off with when building your JCSML animations. It includes the scripts necessary to run the libraries. It also contains a starting element that will be the target of your animations. After the page has finished loading, we utilize the jQuery ready function. And now we must initialize JCSML. This is always the first step. Here you can see we're passing in the location of that transparent GIF for IE7 and IE8 compatibility. Now that JCSML is initialized, we will utilize the Media Launcher in order to load the images we defined in anim1.js. After those images have been downloaded, it'll execute the callback function defined here. So at this point, we are guaranteed all images have been retrieved from the server. Logo anim is then created as a new media sequence, and we pass in logo, which is what we defined in anim1.js as our media object script structure. And then we loop it. Negative 1 says to loop it indefinitely. However, there are other options for the media sequence. You can loop a specific sequence multiple times, one time, or you can have it loop indefinitely. This gives you a lot of options when creating and building your animations. Now let's see this thing in action. We will open up a browser and browse to template.html on our local host. Here, we can see the animation execute exactly as we've defined it. It flies towards you from zero dimensions to 130 by 103. The rotation starts at 300 degrees and finishes at zero, fading in the entire time. It lasts 2.5 seconds and it repeats indefinitely. Now, the ease out bounce easing effect Remember, it is applied to all attributes, so it basically rewinds itself as it bounces across all attributes. Uh, you can get some pretty neat effects with that functionality. Now let's take a look at this animation in IE8. As you can see, it animates exactly the same as it does in Chrome. Frame rates in IE7 and IE8 suffer, unfortunately, due to the horsepower of the JavaScript engine. But 
lightweight animations with rotation and fading are possible in those browsers. Now let's have a little fun. Earlier I had mentioned you can have multiple sequences within the same media object script structure. I'd like to demonstrate that and just how easy it is to make pretty complex animations with very little work. Here we will take sequence one and make a simple copy of it. Now what you can do with sequencing is a, a concept I call sequence chaining. So we have an ending position here for the last frame. You shouldn't have to, I, to define an entirely new initial frame if you just want to continue from the state of the last frame. So you can actually remove this and just start in on your next section. So here we want to take whatever finishing position it was in and we want to say we want its left to be, you know, eight, 700 pixels top. Let's make it fly off the screen down below. We'll have it fade back out. Let's give it some crazy angle. Let's have it spin really fast. And we'll have it get really large in the process. And let's make it take six seconds. And we'll do a different easing function. We'll do ease out back. And we'll go ahead and save that. Now let's jump over to our browser and see what that does. Here it comes in and now it zips out. See how easy that was? Now we'll take a moment to review the Ajax version of this template. As you can see, the big difference here is we've wrapped anim1ajax.js in a jQuery function. And we've also embedded the media launcher call that starts the animation within this script. If we review the template ajax.html file, we can see that we use jQuery's get script method to retrieve the animation file and execute it. This capability is very important because you can create standalone animations that can be sold and distributed without having to be hard coded to the web page it will be dropped into. Now let's take a moment to review the animation. As you can see, this is the same as the original simple template since it is actually just referencing the original animation. So this concludes our intro tutorial and I hope you enjoy using JCSML. Please send me your feedback, ideas, or suggestions and have a great and wonderful day.